Y'all, I had been dying to finish the 96 volt razor. In this episode, we're gonna talk about the parts, the components, the price, the cost of the bike, and then we wanna see how fast it goes. Let's go. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. I know y'all want to know how fast the bike is. And we'll get to it. We'll get to it. I promise. Pinky swear. Pinky swear. I want to go over the components and the cost of the components and where they came from. The motor, the controller, and the throttle came from Econic Cycles. If you're shopping over there, Econic, the discount code is Voltron5. This is a QS 165-50H. People ask me all the time, Kyle, can it take 96 volts? I have no idea. I don't know. It, I mean, we're gonna ride until it doesn't take 96 volts, I'll tell you that. QS 165-50H. The motor costs $525. The controller, a 96-1800HR, one of the most badass controllers Far Driver makes. The cost on that was about $1,300. The throttle is also from Econic Cycles, about 60 bucks. And most of these components are kind of plug and play, really, from Econic Cycles. The next thing we're gonna talk about is the battery. This battery is an Amherst battery. It's 400 amps continuous, it's 40 amp hours. If you look here, I had to accommodate the frame or modify the frame. Don't look too close at the frame. Don't look too close at the welds because I know y'all out there want to hate on the welds. I'm not a welder, I'm just a guy with the garage who just does what he wants. A few moments later. Ooh, these welds. Mm. I said, don't look too close at the frame. Don't look too close at the welds. Let's go on to the next part. The next thing we're gonna talk about here is the brakes. These brakes you probably have seen in the Razor scene for a while now. These are from Don Peterson, and I'll drop Don Peterson's contact information here so you guys can get a hold of them if you guys want some RPM brakes for your build. These brakes, front and back, fully bled lines with the aluminum matching levers and reservoirs was $300. Don also sent me this nice wire management kit here for the brake lines. They go here on the forks, and there's a couple back there on the swing arm that keep that brake line nice and tight, just so it doesn't catch on anything, and it looks super clean. $300. One of the standout features of this bike is the swing arm and the belt kit on this bike. These parts are from Midwest Mini Mods. They cost, well, I forgot how much they cost. Hold on, let me look it up. I got a book right here with all the costs in it. Okay, I got it here, I got it. I'm back on track. The swing arm kit, $559. This is a kit specific for the QS165. The belt kit, so that's the, the belt and this pulley back here, I guess you could say, $259. And the shock is also from Midwest Mini Mods. The shock was $119. Beautiful, beautiful components. Some of the best I've ever seen. The forks on this bike, this is a standard pit bike size fork, 630 millimeters. They are from Ride or Die right here in Austin, Texas. 630 millimeters from top to bottom, 45, 48 millimeter clamps. Ride or Die, R&D, $325 for the forks. The discount code for Ride or Die is Voltron at checkout. The decals on this bike are from Christian Castro. You can find him on the Facebook groups, Christian Castro, or he's also on eBay where you can order your decals from the JC graphics company there. The graphics kits are spot on every single time. Christian Castro, $85 for the graphics. The last couple components I'm gonna to talk to you guys about are the wheel and tire kit. Those parts came from my website, VoltronWatch.com, also known as The Watch Shop. I don't have a price right now, but when you look at the website as I release this video, it will have a price probably between $300 and $350. And that includes the wheels, the tires, the discs, and a 420 sprocket. I also have black versions of this wheel also. The handlebars here are a Pro Taper lookalike type bar. These are also from the Watt Shop, check them out. I got black, blue, gold, silver, purple, and probably two other colors I'm forgetting. But the bars on the website are about 55 bucks. And since I like you guys so much, I have a discount code for my own website. It's Voltron5 at checkout. So after it's all said and done, all the parts are added up, how much did it cost to build this bike? And it comes out to right around $6,000. That's kind of a lot of money for a kid's toy, I'll say that, six grand. Whew. Well, it's fun though, let's go ride it. It is essential that the belt does belt stuff. The brakes must do stoppy things, and the wheels have to do spinny things in order to make this test a success. Because Voltron built this bike, and anything can happen. 
All right, guys, so I am here at the area where we're gonna do our test. Right now, I'm gonna use my phone as the GPS. I got the GoPro here, and I have the 360 over here on the swing arm. We're gonna do this first run. What I did not mention in the opener is this bike is only on Auto Learn. It doesn't even need any more than Auto Learn. To be honest with you, it is super wild and crazy as it is. On this first pass, we're gonna set it up for 200 amps from the battery. The second pass, we'll set it up for 400 amps from the battery. Let's go. We got up to 72, 73 miles an hour at 200 battery amps. I just bumped it up to 400 battery amps, 1200 phase amps. Let's see what we get. Here we go. Alright guys, so we got about 73, 74, 75 miles an hour out of the 96 volt bike. That was at 200 battery amps and 400 battery amps. The big difference between the two inputs on the controller is how fast the bike got to its top speed. At 200 battery amps, it was almost manageable to, to get there and without you know losing the bike. At 400 battery amps, 1200 phase, it's not even usable. It is with this short of a wheelbase and, and this this size of this, I guess you'd call it a pulley back here. This thing is 11 inches in diameter. It's huge. So at 400, 1200, it's really not usable. The one thing I'd have to do is what I do want to do is maybe even get a smaller pulley in the back. And that's going to make my top speed faster while making my takeoff a little bit more manageable because right now there's just so much power in this gearing that's wasted down low because I can't even get on the throttle without the bike wanting to, to just shoot off into outer space. So smaller sprocket in the rear and then maybe a tune. What I wanna do is I'm gonna tune it, like I was saying earlier, this is only on a auto tune. So it's just whatever the controller thinks is the best setup for what your inputs were in the beginning. Maybe I'll get Bill Krause from Midwest Mini Mods or Blake Crosby. You know, Blake Crosby's got the fastest razors in the world get him to tune it for me or Ryan Goodyear or, or somebody who knows what they're doing because I can get the bike running and I can get them working kind of like probably like most of y'all but I can't get into the nitty gritty and find the small incremental gains that these controllers are capable of doing. A couple more things that I noticed in this shakedown is I'm going to have to get some drag pegs on here if I want to continue to go fast on this thing. I gotta get some pegs in the back, which I can do. This right here, these are actually just handlebars that I bent and shaped to the frame. I weld them to the frame and put grips on them just so I can ride it. And it's actually really comfortable uh, for an adult, this seating right here. But if I'm gonna go fast and I wanna drag race this thing, I need to have some pegs back here that I can lay down on. Another observation that I made during the shakedown is the suspension. It needs to be tighter. Now that's not the suspension's fault. This The suspension's made for, you know, a regular modified bike, I guess you could say. This is not regular. I bet this thing weighs over 200 pounds between all the stuff that went into making this bike. The battery alone, I bet, weighs 90 pounds and I weigh 200 pounds. So with all together, this thing weighs probably 400 pounds with me on it. The suspension, I need to tighten it up. I need to adjust the rear, probably adjust the front and put some thicker oil in here and, and make some adjustments on here. And oh, also it needs a steering dampener, 100%. If you're going over 65, 70 miles an hour on this thing, maybe 50 miles an hour on these things, steering dampener, that's coming. It's gotta happen. Anyway, guys, that's everything for me today. I hope you guys enjoyed the content. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing. It takes a ton of time to put these videos together, but I love it and I love you. Thanks for being here, guys. Later.